as a kid, whenever we drove past a cemetery, my father would always say, wow, you know, people are, they're just dying to get in there. In my hometown of Rockford, we had the Scandinavian cemetery, the Catholic cemetery, and the Jewish cemetery. The Jewish cemetery just had the word Hebrew over it. I read once that there's a difference between a graveyard and a cemetery. A graveyard is associated with a church, and a cemetery is just a commercial enterprise for dead people. Both are probably fairly good business models. Neither one has any border disputes. Yes, there is occupied territory, but nobody's fighting over it. Welcome. Welcome to Sunday Coffee Hour. I'm Stanley Smith at Sunday Coffee Hour. We talk about everything and nothing. This week, we talked about putting a, a smile on even a bad situation, not being a morning person, analytics, and about being in the wilderness for the past nine years. The readings at Washington National Cathedral were from Leviticus. Do not be partial to the poor or show deference to the wealthy. And from Thessalonians, be pleasing unto God and not unto mortals. The gospel reading was from Matthew. It was about sometimes we're looking for an answer, but it seems like we're just talking to ourselves. The sermon at Washington National Cathedral was by Gene Robinson. He preached about following the rules and how church can seem like God's police. Gene said that in the Bible, there are over 600 rules about the rules. It's a phenomenon known as spiritual fencing, placing rules on top of rules to prevent you from even getting close to breaking them. Jan Cope attributed this idea to noted Hebrew scholar, Amy Jill Levin in one of her sermons on a similar topic a couple years ago. Jean said rules are a judgmental person's dream come true. We can follow the Ten Commandments and still be an asshole. It's a very low bar. Rules tell us that we're a good person because we follow them. And it tells us that other people are bad because they break them. Jean said in marriage, sexual fidelity is the least we're called to do because we're called to honor one another first and foremost. Just because you have sex with someone doesn't mean you honor them or even love them. We start most creeds with, I believe. I believe in God. We're never quite sure we're getting it right, but we read the creed anyway. God loves us beyond all the rules and any measure of fidelity, whether you're a good person or a bad person, because we're all married together, God and humanity. At St. James Cathedral, the sermon was by Lisa Hackney James. She said she's aware that no one signed up for her class. So she stopped short of trying to figure out a solution for peace in the Middle East. But she said that we should uh, you know, reach out to both our Jewish friends and our Palestinian friends at this time and ask them if they're okay. Lisa said the atrocities and loss of life on both sides are alarming, painful, and devastating, especially so when they're directed at women and children. Lisa said that governments contend with other governments and religions contend with other religions. But God's first commandment is to, is to us. It's not to governments or religion. And that commandment is to love one another. Can a government love another government or a religion love another religion? Where's the opportunity for fidelity in that? Jesus was the king of a failed religion. That sounds really, really bad. It even sounds kind of anti-Semitic. We're told that Hamas is a terrorist group, but we need to remember that terrorism means you're an enemy of the state and not necessarily an enemy of other people. Lisa was correct. Governments contend with other governments. Jesus didn't arrive to be the king of a religion. He came to be the king of our hearts. In my hometown, the Scandinavian cemetery abuts the Jewish cemetery. The only thing in dispute is that we're all humans. And that's, that's on us. Norman Vince Appeal said the only people without problems 
by the people in the cemetery. Karl Marx wasn't entirely off track about his negative views on religion. I was excommunicated from church on three separate occasions for not following the rules. They finally had to litigate against me and take me to court to forbid me from ever entering the building again. I wasn't charged with speaking out against God, but for being a threat to church. A new Hindu friend of mine recently told me that much of what goes on in the world plays out over and over again due to misinterpretation, mistaken thought, and actions. Trying too hard to follow the rules, trying to please other, other people, and giving deference to both the poor and the rich, it creates huge distortions. We cling to distortions and try to navigate them by creating more distortions. I had a dream recently that I was at the beach. I remarked about how, how bright the sun was, and I was immediately corrected by those around me who said that light comes from everything all around us. But God gave us the sun so we'd have something to point to. God doesn't practice partiality, but we do. And then it often has catastrophic consequences. Yes, reach out to your Jewish friends and reach out to your Palestinian friends. Reach out to anyone who is hurting. That's our job. We don't need the state or religion for that. God gave us, he gave us the sun to point to and we can follow that example. Who cares? what anyone else thinks. God will be pleased. He'll be pleased with us. And that's the only thing that really matters. If you would like to join us at Sunday Coffee Hour, Sunday Coffee Hour is every Sunday at 12 noon Central Time on Zoom. I will include my email in the description of this video. I'll be happy to send you an invitation. And I look forward to seeing you very, very soon.